Imagine a world where steam engines power everything from factories to ships, trains, and even the very heart of the Industrial Revolution. During the 19th century, inventors all over the world were locked in a race to build more efficient, powerful steam engines. But today, we're going to talk about an engine that had enormous potential, yet never truly got its time in the spotlight, John Erickson's caloric engine. Now, Erickson wasn't just any inventor. He was a Swedish engineer with a brilliant mind and a vision to change how the world used energy. While steam engines of the time worked by boiling water and using the steam to drive pistons, Erickson thought he could improve upon that. And in 1833, he developed what he called the caloric engine, an early form of heat engine that promised to be cleaner, safer, and far more efficient than anything else available. But before we dive into why it was so revolutionary, let's quickly talk about what a steam engine actually is. Picture it like this. The engine heats water to produce steam, which expands and pushes a piston, and that's how motion is created. Simple, right? Except for one major problem. Steam engines were hot, dangerous, and extremely inefficient. They needed tons of coal, and often the boilers would explode. Erickson believed there had to be a better way. And that's where his caloric engine came in. Unlike the typical steam engine, the caloric engine didn't rely on water at all. Instead, it worked by heating air. Yes, air. Erickson's idea was to heat air to high temperatures, causing it to expand and dry the engine's pistons. He believed this would be much safer than using boiling water under high pressure. In theory, it made sense, no more explosions, and it would use far less fuel. So how did it actually work? The engine used a large cylinder that was heated by an external fire. Air would enter the cylinder, expand as it was heated, and then drive a piston. After that, the air was cooled down and reused in the next cycle, making the process more efficient. No need for water tanks, less need for coal. It sounded like the future. Erickson was so confident in his invention that he built a 45-meter long ship called the Erickson, which ran on his caloric engine. This ship crossed the Atlantic Ocean in 1852, a major feat for the time. Can you imagine? A ship powered by nothing but hot air and fire. But as promising as the caloric engine was, it didn't take over the world. And you might be wondering, why? What went wrong? Well, here's the thing. The engine, while innovative, had its limits. It worked great in theory, but in practice, the amount of heat required to make the air expand wasn't enough to power large machinery or big ships consistently. On small scales, it was fine, but as industries grew and demanded more power, steam engines kept getting bigger and better. Ericsson's engine, unfortunately, just couldn't keep up. There was also another obstacle, cost. The caloric engine was expensive to build, and since steam engines were already being mass-produced, people weren't willing to take the financial risk of switching to a completely new system. Steam had momentum, and despite all the dangers, it was familiar. But here's a fun anecdote. Ericsson wasn't discouraged easily. He continued working on improvements for his engine throughout his life, convinced that one day, the world would catch up to his vision. At one point, he even considered using solar energy to heat the air in his engines. Yes, you heard that right, solar energy in the mid-1800s. It's wild to think that one of the earliest ideas of solar power came from this same mind. John Erickson's caloric engine was a bold attempt to rethink energy production during a time when steam reigned supreme. And although it never became the dominant technology, it still stands as a testament to the creativity and ambition of one man who saw a different way forward. Who knows if things had gone just a little differently Maybe today we'd be talking about caloric engines instead of steam power as the defining force of the industrial revolution. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed learning about this forgotten innovation, make sure to subscribe 
and leave a comment. What other laws technologies would you like to hear about next?